Hi, this is David Davis from Actual Tech Media. We're live here at the Atlanta VMware User Group, and I'm excited to be joined by Mr. Andrew Miller, Principal Systems Engineer at Pure Storage. Andrew, how you doing? Doing well. It's always a pleasure. It was very cool to see you when you're coming in today and that we were able to connect. Yeah, it's great to see you again. We've interviewed a, a few times before mm -hmm. in the past, mm -hmm. and last time I spoke to you, you were with a, a different company. I was. And I know you've been with Pure Storage now, is it seven months, you said? Just about, just about seven, actually a little bit over seven months, so yeah. Okay. I'm enjoying it a lot. So Pure Storage, I mean, I'm a big fan of what you all are doing at Pure Storage. I followed the Accelerate uh, mm -hmm. conference and all the big announcements around there. I know we're going to talk about a few of those. Uh, so let me first just ask you, what have you learned about Pure Storage since being here, or since being at the company for seven months now, and, mm -hmm. and what has surprised you? Yeah, so I think there were, there were some things that I knew that I wanted to join for, and we'll maybe even cover those out of the Accelerate announcements a little bit, some of the cloud stuff where yeah. I knew I wanted to go. But there were some areas that I'd kind of stopped looking in in the data center from an innovation standpoint. It's like, oh, I'm not looking over there. I don't think there's any more innovation going on, you know, kind of thing. Right. So I've been, I've been pleasantly surprised as I've dug into what Pure has done. Uh, but for instance, you know, and this is getting a little bit more technical, but it's still, where, it's still like where my heart is, even though it's, a, you know, it's grown beyond just the, the Pure technical hands-on, is thinking about the data reduction pipeline, how that works inside Pure. There's multiple compression engines. We've actually introduced new ones over time that have given that customer space. It was built in from day one. And the data reduction, while it helped make, bring Flash to be affordable 10 years ago, actually is still playing out in making our cloud strategy work. It reduces the amount of space that we need in the public cloud. So you can pay Amazon and Azure because they want their money, but we probably need to charge you for the products that we introduce in the public cloud too, that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. I'd say the other big one is um, it's based on what we call direct flash which is that just about everybody else in the industry buys SSDs, we buy raw NAND. And then we essentially write that SSD firmware, and the way that we do it allows majorly lower write amplification, which is critical for Flash, because okay. on Flash, reads are free, writes are destructive. The more you write to Flash, it's kind of weird to think about. Every time you write to something on your SSD and your laptop, yeah. you're actually destroying it a little bit. <laughs> That's actually what <laughs> That is like. a strange concept, so yeah. The less you do that, the way more endurance you get out of Flash, that okay. translates to lower prices to customers, to better, better margins for Pure that we can invest into innovation. Mm -hmm. When we talk about QLC and some of the stuff at Accelerate, QLC as a newer Flash is really bad about the amount of rights that you can put to it. So engineering work that Pure had done three, five years ago is paying off in new facets and maybe even in some cases unanticipated ways. So it's been fun to dig into that stuff. Yeah, yeah, very cool. So there's a lot more storage innovation that Pure Storage is doing that maybe people didn't even think about. I mean, storage storage isn't storage. There's a lot more to it than that. So, I mean, and what have you learned that, that kind of surprised you? Yeah, so I'd say looking at, um, someone's been looking at the, the cloud pieces and, and now I'm going to, I'm going to go into a little bit of the accelerated analysis, maybe not, not at the high level. Yeah. So as I've, when I came to Pure, I knew that I wanted to continue kind of down to both a data infrastructure path and cloud path, just where I wanted to go personally. Yeah. So because Pure was pushing into the cloud, I, I knew, so the piece that didn't surprise me, that Pure was going that direction. What I didn't know necessarily was as you look at some of the internal cloud constructs, let's just, let's just be real, like EBS on Amazon, it was built as an original boot service. Hmm. It doesn't have things like thin provisioning or robust snapshots or data reduction. That's fine, it's not what it was built for, right? right? Or you look at S3, that's super durable, but it's eventually consistent over 15 minutes or so. Again, it's not bad, it's just what, it, what it's built for. Yeah. So if you want something like enterprise block service in the cloud, that seems easy, and other people have announced it, but if you just try and port it over as a virtual machine, it doesn't work very well. Hmm. You actually run into performance and availability issues and even possibly data loss, it's scary, hmm. just, you can hit that wow. issue. So, so Pure had to go in and say, we can't just take Purity, run it in the cloud. We actually have to create what we call virtual drive modules. We almost make that direct flash module, like we make the equivalent of an FPGA. We use some EC2 compute. We use EBS. We use S3. We use DynamoDB to help with eventual consistency. Wow. So for me, as I dug into that, that was surprising to me. Of, I knew that Pure was going this direction, how much hard engineering work had to go into it, because I'm still in my role close to product management and engineering. And then that, but it made sense because I'd heard there were people giving this messaging for a long time, but not really delivering on it beyond the PowerPoints. It's okay. like, well, that's why. Yeah. It's actually really hard. I didn't know all that. Yeah, because at first glance, I mean, just to hear the headline, like Pure is now running in AWS, 
someone might think, well, doesn't AWS already have storage? Why do I need to run Pure? Mm -hmm. Purity's operating system, the Purity operating system in AWS. So that's why. Yep. And even the, the fascinating thing there is that you could say that AWS might not actually be you could see a world where AWS is like, oh, I don't like that, you know, because they're going to take away things from us. But AWS has actually been super receptive. Because I think we've all seen brownfield apps or existing apps you can't refactor. Yeah. You try and put them out into infrastructure as a service in whatever cloud provider, doesn't matter which one. Yeah. It's very challenging, often from a cost perspective, performance perspective. We were talking right before this about a customer who put it all out to a cloud provider and then had to move it all back. That's yeah. an operational level. That, that's painful. So, painful so painful to think about. Yeah. Like, all that work for nothing? And you've been doing other things? Right. So when, when we actually look at it from a pure standpoint, because you needed those capabilities, the applications in the data center make certain assumptions about the storage underneath. Those are very different assumptions than you would have for cloud storage. So AWS is actually seeing this as, it helps expand the applications that can run in AWS, and we'll be doing this in Azure down the road. That, that's public, we're not, we're not there yet, but we will. Yeah. It's, it's a multi-cloud a multi vision. And that even goes all the way back to where I started with data reduction about kind of the idea of financial headroom. If you're going to run an AWS, you will pay AWS for S3 and EBS. That's totally fair, you right. should. But unless you have an enterprise storage platform in the cloud that can do crazy data reduction on that, three, mm. four, five, six to one, literally the same code as on-prem, yeah. there won't be the financial headroom to pay pure, because we have a ton of engineers working on this, yeah. to pay AWS and have it work out, or it'll only work for your very top applications versus a much larger swath of your application set. Ah, okay, okay. So once I have Purity running in the cloud, mm -hmm. if I have pure storage on-premises, can I replicate data or synchronize data? How, how does this help me? That's where I kind of think about, if you look at the, the Purity code stack, you can kind of divide it in half. You know, the pieces you know up here that are the same no matter where they run. Okay. That's the UI, replication, data reduction, that kind of snapshots. All that's literally the exact same code. So the, can I replicate from Purity on-prem to Purity in the cloud? It's the same code. And we tested it too, right? But even if you didn't yeah. test it, it, it's the same code. There's a piece lower that's kind of the software that enables unique hardware. Okay. On-prem, that's like the direct flash modules and our NVRAM card and that kind of stuff. In the cloud, that's where we said, you know, we need to treat AWS like a collection of hardware primitives. That's AWS's term, right? right? They create primitives, right? We just happen to assemble those primitives into an application that looks like a storage array. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to hear what you all are doing at Pure Storage, continually innovating on storage, doing more than I think, you know, a lot of people even dreamed of. Uh, it's great to see you again, Andrew. Likewise. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for being on. Appreciate it.